It, it costs them about $30,000 on Duma Ridge on a daily basis. This is quite impactful. Now, why, why I'm giving some of these alleged facts is so that we relate it to Nigeria that is a monotone of the economy. And so you begin to visualize what the impact is going to be. Now, with the devastating effects of COVID, the UN projected that it 1% of the 3.3 3 billion world's workforce may lose their jobs, resulting in more than half a billion more people forced into uh, poverty. Now, fallout from the lockdown crisis has led to worries about unprecedented global food and insecurity. As more countries have resorted to uh, export restrictions on critical agricultural produce and health um, products, a situation that has forced countries around the world to start moving away from multilateral, uh, multilateralism to promoting protection, uh, protectionist policies to protect their own people and their economies. And as a matter of fact, um, the International Food Policy Research Institute has stated about 37 countries, 37 countries have enacted various forms of food as well restrictions in response to COVID-19. Now, Vietnam, for instance, which we know is the largest exporters of uh, rice, suspended granting um, licenses for export of uh, rice. Russia has done the same thing with wheat. Now the question we'll be asking, what does this hold for us in Nigeria? When over 37 countries have had their full restrictions, what is it in there for us in Nigeria? Now, the impact on Nigeria, the economic fallout from COVID-19 pandemic and the crash in global oil prices appears an existential threat for Nigeria. The, we had two Twin shots, like I said, is a pandemic that started off as a health crisis, now dovetailed into economic with crash in global oil prices. And these twin shocks for the econo um, nation's economy has been devastating uh, effects on businesses and, and the economy. As the nation is faced with a grim economic reality, obtaining economic recovery, uh, disruption to supply chains and production and slowdowns. Now look at it this way. If you look at our GDP, now the, the prediction is that the economy is going to shrink by 3.5% year on year in 2020. Now you look at the revenues drivable from oil, it's projected to decline by about 90.0% in 2020. And then look at the effect on the budget. The budget have been reversed, are following the reduction in oil benchmark from $57 uh, dollars per barrel to $30 uh, dollars per barrel, uh, coupled with reduction in oil production volume from 2.18 million barrels to 1.7 million barrels per day. And is expected to reduce uh, the government uh, re uh, revenue projection for 2020 by 3.33 uh, million. This is quite, quite enormous. The, 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 the fall in oil demand is projected to an unprecedented 9.3 million. And this is the highest we've seen. And it has outpaced previous global um, uh, recessions. In 1983, it was um, 4.12 million uh, barrels per day. 2008, it was 0.66 million a day, and in 2009, it was uh, 0.97 million barrels a day. And you can also recall 2008, and that's in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. And what this seems to tell us is that we are vulnerable to exogenous shocks because we are monoproduct economy. And so the question is, what do we do? This would also impact on, um, uh, on government expenditure. As revenue is going down, we've seen also um, government expenditure increase as a result of the lockdowns. And the government have had to introduce bailout packages for households, businesses affected and to rebuild the economy. And would also 
uh, disrupt um, disruptions in trade and the investment. Now, the issue is, what is India for Nigeria? Yes, of course, there has been, um, countries are now working in silos. Yes, there has been export restrictions, but this also presents a tremendous opportunity for Nigeria for diversification uh, through um, agriculture. You know, now the, the agricultural industry, particularly grains and um, other staples, presents a strong potential for diversification of the government revenue base as domestic food demand is expected to continue to increase to cover consumption and raw materials for industries. In the area of food and security, um, with the growing momentum in demand for foodstuff and raw materials by households and businesses, respectively, vis-a-vis -vis the availability and local production, the growing restrictions on food exports for by countries presents an important opportunity to start to look inwards as a nation to guarantee food security and availability of raw materials for domestic industries. And I think this is this is this is where the cash is. That as we have these lockdowns, yes, as there are export restrictions, it also presents opportunity for us to begin to look inwards and see what we can what we can do. And we would also see um, helps our uh, development in agricultural value chain. You know, beyond that production, the numbers of opportunities are evident across the value chain in manufacturing of agricultural inputs, agrotech initiatives, on-farm and secondary domestic processing, livestock poultry processing, commodity trading, transportation, market research. And I think this is where also the cash is. Value addition to what we're doing. We've talked about diversification. Now the question is, diversify to what? If we diversify to just agriculture, yes, that is good. Primary production, that is good. But again, if we are spot just cuckoo, it's still vulnerable to external shocks. And we don't have control over demand, we don't have control over supply. And so the add-on is the cash here. And so value addition, what are we bringing to the board? In 2014, for instance, Africa exported about um, and about 2.4 billion exporting coffee to Europe. Why Germany? Germany alone and about 3.8 billion exporting Africa's coffee. And what's the difference? Value addition. I also expect that uh, this, you know, uh, there will be an increase in digital biz uh, business and ecosystem. As we say, that the domino effect of the COVID-19 pandemic of food imports and disruption to food and raw material supply chain, innovative companies are becoming key players in defining the narrative of agricultural evolution using technology in catalyzing the growth and development of sustainable agribusiness in Nigeria and driving financial inclusion among smallholder farmers, selected farmers to input uh, supplies and unlocking access to market. The reality is that this is this is the new normal. No matter how you look at it post-COVID, things are not going to remain the same. Today we are having this discussion online and this is going to impact on every sector. And so the earlier we begin to brace up to this, the better for us both as a nation and as a people, including those in the agricultural sector. We've had series of meetings with stakeholders in agricultural sector, including input suppliers, um, uh, even to an extent, some small uh, holder farmers around our Anko Growers program. We are still on course because we leverage technology to discuss all of that. Now, what has been CBN's response to COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, I've always said that the Central Bank of Nigeria is strengthening the Nigerian economy First, by providing a 3.5 trillion combined stimulus package to ta uh, in targeted measures at households, businesses, manufacturers, and healthcare uh, providers. We are working on the guidelines of all of this. Some of them are already out, like the targeted um, credit facility. Of course, there is the 50 billion targeted credit facility introduced in March. This is a stimulus package to cushion the effects of uh, COVID-19 pandemic on households and MSMEs across across the country. Yes, the boss has started 
uh, I'm going to skip more of this uh, just in the end, in a little while. There is also the 100 billion credit support for health sector. This was also established in uh, April 2020 by the CBA as part of our proactive measures to cushion the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the healthcare industry. Specifically, the scheme is to provide credit to indigenous pharmaceutical companies and other health care value chain players intending to build or expand their capacity. Interest rate has been reduced from 9% to 5% on all of CBN interventions, effective from March 1, 2020. However, we expect that by March 1, 2021, would revert to 9% all in inclusive for all of the CBN uh, interest rate. We've also um, extended the moratorium on facilities that Central Bank has extended by 12 months. Now, the next slide actually speaks on what the CBN is doing, the immediate term policy priorities, which is uh, three, uh, zero to three months, the short term policy priorities, and then, of course, the medium-term uh, policy priorities. Now, essentially, most of what I have on this slide, um, if you read the governor's turning the COVID-19 um, tragedy into an opportunity for a new Nigeria, you will have all of this. So I'll just move quickly um, to the next, which is the existing interventions for the agricultural sector. Can I move to the next two slides? Existing interventions for the agricultural sector. Now, um, I'm going to glance over some of them. But those ones I know that will speak to what the audience here uh, would want to hear, I will elaborate much more on that. Now, the first one is the Agricultural Credit Guarantee uh, Scheme. This was established to stimulate banks lending to entrepreneurs and enterprises engaged in agriculture by providing guarantee for loans granted by banks for crop, livestock production, processing, and marketing. Now, this provides credit guarantees on facilities extended to farmers by banks up to 75% of the amount in default net any security. Now, there is the interest drawback program. And this was introduced as an uh, initiative under the ACGS to incentivize farmers by providing interest rebates to reduce the cost of borrowing from banks and the burden of high interest rates. The interest rebate is presently 40% of cumulative interest uh, paid by participating uh, farmers. The ACGS essentially, this is a contingent liability plan. Now, Banks are expected to leverage their own balance sheet now to lend to smallholder farmers. The maximum amount is uh, 10 million for corporates and 1 million for individuals. Now, they is expected that the, 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 the facility will be extended at the market rate. And because we know that this market rate is uh, quite huge for the individual farmers, that's why the IDP was introduced as an incentive to those who repay their facility. Now, when they repay the facility, they are expected to get an interest draw back of 40% of what they are paid. And that's the agricultural uh, guarantee uh, scheme. Now, there is the Anchor Borrowers Program, which was used to create an ecosystem that links smallholder farmers to anchors and uh, agro processors. And uh, the design of the ABP was aimed on a grower support, training of farmers, extension workers, and banks, aggregate officers, and rich uh, Now, essentially, what they try to do is to bring all of the stakeholders within that ecosystem, the agricultural ecosystem, across the entire value chain, bring them together, <clears throat> and by bringing the financing, so that you have the input supplier, you have the participating financial institution, you have the anchors who is going to uptake, you have the farmers who are going to produce, and then you have extension workers who is going to add value to what the farmers are doing. You know, bring all of them together to ensure that end to end, you know, that the facility is tied up. 
Now, the input uh, suppliers gives the farmers the inputs they require. The, 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 the amount is paid directly to the input supplier. The farmer produces and the off-taker, who is now the anchor, takes and then pays him back into the account. And the, well, the most have had the kind of uh, guaranteed minimum pricing. And when that happens, then the farmer now takes the balance of whatever there is why why the facility is paid. Now, there are several models for this, the Anchor Brewers program. You have the prime anchor model, where the central bank shares 50% uh, of the risk, and the, just 50% of the risk, and the, uh, the participating financial institution also bears 50% of the risk. However, we expect the prime anchor to provide 70% uh, collateral coverage for the borrowing. And uh, we also expect them to express interest to both the, the prime anchor and the, the participating financial institution, they will also indicate the commodity, uh, commodities that they are interested and in, number of farmers. They would also provide farmers list for BVM uh, validation and also an economics of production for uh, uh, ratification. And then the farmers will also be registered uh, in the NCR. Now there is a NISA model. I'm not going to speak on this because the NISA man is there. Um, but essentially, central bank bears were seventy five percent of the risk, and the while we expect that NISA will pick up the other one. Then there is the public uh, sector where the state government participates, and we expect that they will provide ISP to cover one hundred percent of the of the, uh, of the exposure. And then there is the NISA guarantee for private uh, private and state led anchors. Um, through the deployment of their CRG, the NISA man would expect not to speak to that. Now, the next is the accelerated agriculture uh, development uh, scheme. But essentially, this is targeted at the youths, 18 to 35. Um, government is expected to provide the land in contiguous uh, locations, uh, minimum of 100, and 100 hectares per cluster, and then provide the infrastructure. Yeah, now, all of the state governments can participate in this, and the whole essence is uh, increase agricultural production, promote food security, job creation, and economic diversification. And under this, state governments can access up to a maximum of 1.5 billion. Now, there is the commercial um, agri credit scheme, which was established uh, in 2009 to fast track the development of the agricultural sector enhance national food security, generate employment, and reduce the cost of credit for agricultural uh, production. Now, the private sector, this is actually essentially private sector driven, uh, and projects, uh, projects are eligible, they can grow up to 2 billion at an all-inclusive interest rate of 9%, uh, while the state government can assess up to 1 billion under this, uh, under this facility, and that's the cash facility. Now, when I'm speaking of 9% interest, I would also want to say that all of the interest rate, like I said, there has been a reduction as a result of the uh, COVID pandemic on all of CBN's facilities. So all of these that I'm saying 9%, they are all 5% as of today, effective from March 1. However, it is expected that we revert to 9% all inclusive by March 01-2021. And the key agri commodities that we promote on that card so essentially will across that value chain from input supplies to production to processing to storage and to marketing. And the terminal is based on the gestation period of, uh, of the enterprise. Now, there is the party aggregation scheme. This is designed as a special window on that card to essentially provide working capital facility to integrated um, price millers for a tenor of six months at a single digit interest, which is still 9%, right now 5%. And the objective is to increase the production of homegrown rice towards um, affecting lower prices, and enhancing national uh, security. Now, the loan size is determined by the installed capacity of integrated rice mill. And essentially, anybody interested in this, all you need to do 
submit your application through your uh, through your bank, and you also need to pr produce an evidence of ownership of uh, functional rice processing mill. Now you also have the ma the, ma the maize aggregation scheme, which is nearly the uh, same as the paddy, but again to enable the feed millers, poultry farmers, silos, warehouse operators, and confectionery companies to have access to affordable uh, credit. The loan tenure is 12 months maximum with a single legal limit of 2 billion. And it's basically the same. Send your application to your PFIs to use evidence of ownership or lease of a functional uh, feed processing meal, confectionery company, uh, silos or warehouse uh, that can accommodate not less than 5,000 metric tons of base uh, grain. Now we come to the agribusiness, small and medium enterprises intervention uh, uh, scheme, the actions. Now I want to say this that this is an initiative of the Bankers uh, uh, Committee in the effort to also support the federal government uh, in promotion of uh, agribusinesses, small and medium enterprises. Now the deposit money banks are expected to uh, contribute five percent. Of their profit um, after tax annually to this fund. And the maximum loan limit here is 10 million for debt financing, and, um, and it can be assessed through the NISA microfinance. Well, I think what anyone who is interested in this needs to understand, and I guess that there are so many persons that really will be interested in this. The whole essence of this is to get young people into productive enterprises. We recognize that most people pass through universities. Um, perhaps they have all the certificates. We also know that uh, the jobs are not readily there. And so we expect that if you can acquire skills, if you can acquire also get entrepreneurship uh, education, then you can come to this. And that is why we expect that someone who is interested in this facility will first of all go through an educational and entrepreneurship development program where they can get skills and where they can also get entrepreneurship training. And once that happens, then they can apply for this facility. Now, there, there, you have the working capital component, and then you have the debt component. Debt component is 70%, and that's basically equipment. Here, we do not emphasize issues of collateral so much because we expect that if you are picking up equipment, we're going to put a lien on that. The equipment will be registered with um, the, the NCR, the collateral registry, and in the name of the CBO. And then you have your, your facility. Now, the, like I said, the maximum limit here is 10 million. And for anybody who is interested to uh, leverage the AXMIS uh, intervention. Now, there is the real sector support facility differentiated cash reserve requirement. These are essentially for big ticket transactions. And it's an initiative of the CBN uh, that is aimed at supporting the real sector of the Nigerian economy. And under this scheme, deposit money banks can lend out of their CRR. That's why it's called the differentiated cash um, reserve uh, requirement. So they can leverage their reserve to lend to the real sector. The real sector we are looking at here is manufacturing and agriculture, and just recently the health sector. Now, this initiative is aimed to support greenfield and brownfield projects at 9%. And DMBs may have a request for release of their funds from the CR to finance projects verifiably evidence and approval by the CBN. Now, terror is maximum. Well, this is actually a minimum of seven years with two years moratorium on this. Now, the point we are making here is that this is essentially the bank's uh, CR. And then um, we expect that projects in the agriculture and manufacturing sector can, be, uh, can leverage this intervention for uh, projects in here. Now, for us, the emphasis really, because I've had a number of persons who would say, that he has a submitted application that nobody has a application. 
The emphasis for us here is, yes, of course, we are looking at, because for every project in that sector, we look at what are the job creation potentials? Is it a backward integration project? What about import substitution? Does it have export potentials? Is it using local raw materials for production? These are some of the things we look at, you know, when we are praising this project. And so for anybody who wants to leverage this, now the, the thing is you still go through your banks to submit your applications who will do their due diligence and then send them to the central bank. Now, there is also the textile sector intervention uh, facility, which is geared towards um, reviving the cotton textile and the garment sector of the economy. Um, we all know what has happened to that sector. Um, issues of dumping, issues of uh, counterfeiting, issues of infrastructure deficits, and all of that have held that uh, sector down. And so the CBN is putting some facility here to revive uh, input supplies to the primary cotton, to the generis, uh, to the spinners, and then to the textile, and then the market. We're doing everything to tie that up so that people uh, will be able to revive the textile sector. Now, the tenor for the loan is 10 years uh, maximum why working uh, capital is one year um, with a maximum rollover of uh, three years. Now, the targeted credit facility, the COVID-19 targeted credit facility, and I think people would also be interested in this because uh, this just rolled out and uh, we've had a number of applications on that this and there has also been approval. Enforcement that has happened. Uh, on this. Now, it was introduced in March as a stimulus package to support households and micro, uh, uh, small, medium enterprises that have been affected by this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Now, maximum loan amount, well, we said 25 million SMEs and 3 million households. However, what we are doing right now is because we look at it, the, the impact of this pandemic is quite is tremendous. It has affected virtually every household. It has affected uh, so many SMEs and all of that. So our immediate concern is not facilities for people to you know, bring in facility, uh, machineries or begin for expansion and things like that. No, what we are looking at is how can people cushion the effect? There are SMEs that have had shut down. And the next other thing is to begin to, you know, um, side their, uh, uh, their staff and things like that. So we've, this, they can leverage this facility to at least be, continue to support those uh, staff, uh, pay their salaries. The same thing with households. Some of them had taken cuts and um, whatever salaries. Some had lost their jobs and things like that. We expect their households would also able to leverage this facility. Now, for now, what we are doing here is for household maximum is 1 million. And for SMEs, it is about 2.5 million. Like I said, we are looking at the immediate. What can be done? What can these people do, you know, to enable them to continue, you know, to provide services? A hotel that has been shut down because someone who is um, positive, COVID positive, went in there, has may need to negate that hotel, you know. And so these are the kind of facilities we're looking at now. So, like I said, 1 million for household, 2.5 million for um, SMEs. Now, working capital, of course, is a maximum of 25% of average of three uh, previous three years annual return. Where you don't have um, this number of years of annual return, it was 25% of previous year's turnover. Now, the NCR, this is a web-based uh, registry um, for, to enhance movable uh, securities. We've had challenges and issues around uh, providing securities, especially providing uh, securities, uh, land building, and all of that. But we found that we can use assets, actually. And so 
People that has some of these assets can actually register it with NCR to enable them leverage um, some of these facilities. Most of our facilities, the TCF, the AXMIS, that's what we use actually. And so it's a web-based system that allows lenders to determine prior security interests as well as establish their security interests over movable assets that is pledged. Now I'm rounding up. So we are saying that, um, that the Central Bank of Nigeria will continue to develop innovative policies that will tackle issues of um, COVID-19 pandemic and even beyond by supporting businesses and the priority sectors of the economy through the provision of affordable and sustainable development um, financing initiatives. And these efforts remain actually very crucial to us as an institution and we will continue to strive continually to promote economic development through the development of the agricultural value chain and building resilient infrastructure to support businesses um, operating within the sector. The bank will continue to support MSMEs taking to play within the sector, particularly those in production and processing of staple foods and agricultural raw materials uh, for our domestic uh, industry. Uh, thank you so very much for listening. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Deputy Director, Mr. Osita Mwansiobi. Without any doubt, you have given us quite a lot of meat to chew uh, from the list of various interventions that are available in the CBN. And um, for those who may have paid very close attention, you will see quite a lot of um, schemes that are available. Agri-Credit Guarantee Scheme, Anchor Borrowers Program, Accelerated agri Development Scheme, Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme, and a host of others. And I do believe that some of the fellows who are listening to us or watching this webinar may have participated in some of these programs uh, in the course of time or before now. Um, one of the things that bother people in my industry, I happen to be wearing several caps as I'm sitting down moderating this program. One of the things that bother uh, people from my own industry is the scheme that is available for logistics service providers. Um, as beautiful as we are, all of us decked up in our dresses and driving good cars and wearing beautiful ties. If you happen to know the vehicle that brought your food from whatever market or from whatever farm into the market, if you happen to see the truck or the vehicle, most likely you will not like to eat the, the produce that is conveyed on some of those trucks. They are always looking rickety. That's why we have large scale wastage in terms of post harvest losses, which is widely spoken about in Nigeria. If you compare us with other countries of the world, you will see the quality of trucks that are used for the conveyance of uh, agro products. As a matter of fact, when things are produced in some of those farms, it is so possible for you to trace every item from the farm gate to your table because you can have some numbering on every product from the farm, the vehicle that conveyed it, how it got into that farm. But when you get to a mile two market, for example, you will never be able to know who brought that shipment into that market. And so we are worried. Part of what I've been agitating in our industry is to say, what does the CBN have for agro-transportation or agro-logistics, so to speak? What type of scheme? We cannot borrow money at 25% for agro-logistics and you will ever make a profit. How are you going to charge the customer? You can't charge, I can't take money at 25% as if I'm buying a luxury item when it is to support agro-delivery. As a matter of fact, those who borrow money from some of these schemes will borrow at between 5 or 10%. Why should I buy the truck at 25%? What is in place for our industry that will help more people to do investment in this area and they will not run at a loss? One truck that is cold chain might cost you as much as 35 to 40 million. How will you recover that money? if you take the money from a regular bank. Um, so I want the speaker to hold some of this information down. We will ask a few more questions in the course of time. As a matter of fact, I'm already seeing some questions that have been posed. I will say that we will answer the questions at the right time. But something we have done is that there is a poll 
There's a poll that we have just conducted in the last few minutes. I would like um, Secretariat to please put the poll results on the screen. We asked a few questions, and we would like you to see the poll results before we continue. Can you please put the poll results up there for us? Polling. We've done some polling. Can we see the results of the polling? Okay. There are two questions that I'm seeing here, if all of you can see it. First one says, which do you consider to be the most successful government-backed agri finance scheme so far? And we have put about three options there. NASAL, which has the largest number there. 54% of the, of the respondents have said that NASAL happens to be the most successful government-backed agri finance scheme so far. Um, some people have said it is the anchor borrower scheme that is also managed by the CBN. 35% of the respondents have said that, and others have said 15%. So, out of a total of 46 respondents, uh, 25 of them have said uh, they are happy with NASA as being the most successful. Anchor Boras scheme of the CBN, 16 out of 46 have said uh, that's their own preference, and the rest, 7 over 46 have said um, they prefer some others. Now, the second one, where will you go for agri-business finance? Where will you go? And that's a question that I've also posed to the audience. Majority, or let me say, the largest number of people here have said they would rather go to the Bank of Agriculture. Some said they would go to the microfinance banks, 9% of that. Commercial banks, they said 11%. Bank of Industry, 24%. NASA, which is looking like the highest again, 54%. And local cooperative society at 7%. Others, 2%. So on the two counts that we have done, NASA seems to have the highest in terms of uh, where to go for agribusiness finance. And thankfully, the NASA man is also in the house and is watching some of these polls. But uh, this goes back to the question that I raised. If you borrow money from the microfinance bank, at what rate are you borrowing? What type of business are you going to be able to do with it? I trust that our two experts will be able to shed some light on this as we go ahead. Um, I want to thank you, sir, one more time, Mr. Osita, for your very insightful um, discourse. Right now, I would like us to move quickly by inviting our second speaker. Um, and I would like to read his profile before uh, we commence listening to him. We have Mr. Eze Wakama, who is from NESA. I'd like to read his profile. Thank you. Mr. Enze Wakama is the Assistant General Manager, Agricultural Value Chain Finance and Investment Services um, in NASA. Eze Wakama is a seasoned banker and, and has extensive experience spanning over 19 years in agri financing, banking and operations, accounting, financial advisory services, general management, and international banking. Is a strong finance professional with an AGMP focus in agribusiness management from Lagos Business School and Atlantic University. Is a key member of the leadership and management of Nigeria's most capitalized credit risk guarantee institution, NASA, targeted at the risking agricultural lending by the financial institutions. He has previously been involved in development work with the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, NESG, and the Enrich World Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we welcome Mr. Eze Wakama, who will also be shedding light on the subject matter for today, financing agribusiness post-COVID-19, opportunities, threats, and options. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Shola. Good afternoon, uh, and, uh, listeners. And, uh, it's a pleasure having me talk with you today. My name is Eze. I would like to have a presentation and I also wouldn't want to go through a lot of the information that has, we already have so that we can have enough time for questions. The solicitor has done a very wonderful job in, you know, talking about the things that uh, the interventions that Central Bank has and the effect of the COVID-19 on our economy and the cultural sector. So I think I'll just, I have a presentation, it's not too lengthy. So let me go straight to the presentation. So uh, I'll talk about NISA. Uh, the poll results is very fantastic. 
I know, but I will also, if you look to also give a description of what nice out of, of, of this point, uh, from many communications that I get, a lot of people still are not very clear what NISA is. Like uh, yeah. Mr. Sister said, NISA is actually an instrument of the Central Bank of Nigeria. It was incorporated in 2013, and its function, it was designed to redefine, measure, reprise, and share agricultural based risk. As the credit risk guarantees the show, NISA was capitalized to a tune of $500 million. This one is actually with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Because a lot of time when people hear this, they think that the institution has $500 million to lend. No, the $500 million is capitalization to allow NISA to absorb any shock on credit guarantee instruments that issues. It's NISA is owned, is an institution owned by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, and then the Bankers Committee. They came together and said, how do we track this not about lending, access to finance in the agribusiness uh, sector? And NISA was a tool designed to solve this problem. The objective of NISA, one of the cardinal objectives that the uh, CBN has given to NISA is to raise commercial bank agribusiness lending portfolio from the current figure, which is under 3%, to 7% by 2026. To expand the insurance coverage from 0.5, that's half a million to 2.8 million small older farmers across the value chain, and to expand commercial lending to 3.8 million small scale farmers by 2026. I'm happy that we do will be doing a presentation on insurance. Next slide. The five pillars that NISA stands with one, we have a risk sharing pillar. This allows us to bear credit risk with financial service providers up to 75%. But this is the highest in the value chain. This 75% is actually for primary production where the highest risk occurs. It is graduated from B trading at 75%. The other pillar is the insurance pillar. The other pillar is the insurance pillar. The insurance pillar is a pillar that allows us to develop innovative insurance products. And I'm sure when Lido is out, because Lido is a very big, uh, one of our big partners, our biggest private insurance company partner in what we do, they will, they will shed more light on this. But uh, the comfort that lenders need, there's always an insurance component. And that insurance component, how it's structured, speaks to how this risk will be acceptable by the lender. So we have developed this book insurance product and legally is in the forefront of driving this insurance uh, product. Well, the other pillar is the 60 million technical assistance pillar. This allows NISA to actually intervene and bring in stakeholders of different value chains for capacity building, even with our technical partners and national bank uh, partners to build capacity and bring people up to speed of what is currently happening. Then we have two pillars that are that are main, that, you know, it's like a carrot and stick uh, mechanism. We have the rating pillar that allows us to rate participants in agribusiness value chain operations every year. And you give award and commend those who have done good job in the system and give them incentive as a last pillar like incentive to allow them to continue doing what they're doing so that we can meet the, the target. So in NISA, next slide, in NISA, we look at agriculture into four segments. You will all agree with me that uh, prior to this time, when oil was key, the terminologies used in oil were at the same terminologies we were adopting. So that we don't have that feeling that we have lost so much agriculture equally that agriculture equally has the capacity to raise as much money for the country as uh, oil does and in fact as it is today agriculture is a new 40. so we'll, we'll look at agriculture from either of these four segments in the pre upstream segment we have things like fertilizer and agro dealers, we have the seed 
and uh, crop protection protocols, input distribution, tractor equipment and hiring agents, the operators, the mechanics, research, farm extension agent, geomapping agent. All these, like the name connotes pre option, these are the things that happen before anything can be put on the ground, before you can do it. They are the things you need to take care of. And each of these points here is a line of business for those who are looking for business opportunities. Business opportunities along the verticals of this horizontal stream. Every point there is a business opportunity for us to latch onto. In the upstream sector, upstream is actually where the rubber meets the road, according to my view. This is where the seed is put into the ground. And under this condition, this is uh, where we would need insurance companies where they use big data to come up with uh, actuary calculations that tell us the probabilities of you know, achieving the kind of yields we want to achieve that will speak to the profitability and speaks to return on investment when money is borrowed. So the upstream takes care of that. You have the primary processors, they have the primary transport services, primary storage, primary aggregators. Like Mr. Shala was talking about the movement of uh, of the farm produce from the farm to the market, wherever, in, from whatever location you're talking about. This is actually an upstream operation. And in the midstream, in the midstream segment, we have value added processors, service providers for haulage, for warehousing, for packaging, for wholesalers, middlemen, and intermediaries. The logistics companies actually come into this midstream. And then we we'll have the downstream, which speaks to retailers, the industrial processors, the export brokers, the exporters, the merchants. So in the downstream, which represents the market, you have the industrial market, you have the uh, commercial market, local commercial consumer market, you have the export market capture. So this is how we look at agriculture. At every point you're talking about agriculture, we must first of all identify which segment of agriculture. Financing for agriculture depends on what segment of agriculture you're doing. The risk profile of each of these segments is known. Now, if the next slide you can see talks to what NISAL has done, because if you look at Nigeria's GDP, we know that agriculture contributes about 25% of our GDP, and 80% of it, 25% is contributed by uh, crop production. And we have a preponderance of smallholder farmers scattered everywhere. Nigeria, Nigeria's arable land is about 80 million hectares, and I know that we're doing sub 50% of that 80 million hectares. And what you will see is small holdings of 0 0.5 hectares, 1 hectare, 2 hectares, 3 hectares scattered in different places. And that has been the greatest challenge to providing finance to primary production in Nigeria. So we have come up with a model, the agro operating model. This agro operating model tries to bring farmers together. So I could, in my community, as many as we are, and we have land, I could be doing cassava, somebody is doing okra, another person is doing yam, somebody is doing it in a year or some, we've been doing the cropping. But NISAL has gone ahead to do a mapping of Nigeria. We have a map of Nigeria today that tells you the Economic the advantage, the advantage that each area holds in terms of primary production. So some areas are known for meat for producing maize, some areas for cassava, some areas for cashew. So this mapping, this June mapping has been done of Nigeria, and we have the map. And for every production, for every request for finance for in primary production, we refer to that map to understand what you're producing in an area where nature has given advantage for that to happen so that our yields can be maximized. So in bringing the small holder farmers together, NASA has adopted the average cooperative commission initiative. This small, this initiative allows optimization in production and is only when we're able to do mechanization and optimize planting and optimize harvesting and optimize collection of our output. That is when we can speak to capacity to repay our loans. Because the yields 
the yields, the post harvest loss history in Nigeria shows that well over 40% post harvest loss. And that should be of concern if we are not producing at par with other people in the world. The little we are producing, we are losing to support the percent of it. So, optimizing our production method is one sure way of speaking to increase productivity and uh, increase yield. So, our joke operatives start with plots that are uh, the scattered 0.5 to 1 hectare, coming into agro joke operative cells of 10 hectares. And when you have those five of those cells together, they actually they form a block of 50 hectares. And if you have five of the 50 hectares together, you have an agro geo crop of 250 hectares. And like that and like that, you migrate up to the large agro geo cluster. We have also taken into uh, consideration the fact that not every part of Nigeria has access to very huge land. And as such, we have started with the agro geo cooperative cell of 10 hectares, which I know from the studies we have carried out, we can always get minimum of 10 hectares in any part of this country. So it's an inclusive project that allows us to form leadership for these farmers to come together, know your farmer, know your neighbor, know your customer, know your leader. You bring these farmers together, they elect leadership among themselves. They are those, those that will lead them because in every community that will have the federal government program, the ADP program, the Fadama program, there's always somebody from the, those from our community that have been involved in the ADP project. Because that was, yeah, at that time that ADP was in existence, there was a lot of uh, extension work being done, and almost every part of Nigeria was captured. So we make this, we want to leverage on the experience of these people to bring our farmers together, put in mechanization, put in mechanized planting, put in mechanized weeding, put in mechanized, uh, uh, I mean, uh, when, when, when we're talking about spraying for wheat and do mechanized harvesting, I'm sure somebody will have in mind, so all these mechanized are talking about who is going to get the cost. But I tell you something, part of the services, part of the businesses that is open today for you to invest in is in tractor, is in equipment for farming. And these farmers will be able to pay token for services on fee for service basis. We don't expect farmers, smallholder farmers, to own tractors. It's of no use to them. It's a wasting asset. But if you, as an investor, invest in tractors, you can actually take advantage of this job property, provide services, make money for your services. And within a space of two and a half, three years, over two planting systems of irrigation being embedded in this geo cluster. You would have recouped your money. The farmers would also have made very good money. That is what we are, that's why we are pushing, is that the agriculture cooperative uh, structure formation is actually a flagship project that NASA is has, has invested in. And so this next one just tries to give a pictorial diagram of what this geography formation intervention provides. It gives the needed platform required for flow of finance and investment into agricultural organization. The first diagram shows the scattered nature of farmers. When I was in banking, it was, it was a very difficult thing for us to treat the quest of farmers. When you have one farmer in one local government in, a, I would my state, for instance, in Abia State, and uh, he has 0 0.5 hectares, and he needs 700,000 naira for planting operations for that year. The same energy I will spend in treating this transaction, I will spend in treating a transaction that will give me a yield over one billion you know, in a transaction. So you can see that even if you look at it in terms of the 80 20 the Pareto principle of being productive in the office, I didn't have any reason to treat those transactions. But if we're able to bring these people into our job property structure using our optimized primary production model, you can see that we will have clusters that will give you deal tickets that hands will look at and they're interested because it's not just what they were, it's also what the while of the people that you're doing it for. If you have them together like that, you can put in mechanization, you can put in improved seed varieties, you can use the, the uh, crop protection uh, protocols, you can also embed irrigation. All these are free for service models and our yields will actually increase. When these yields increase, it, it, it translates to more money. At the point, when Mr. Zita was giving his uh, presentation, he talked about export restrictions that Russia 
and Vietnam and all the Thailand have put restriction on export of their finished products. It has created a massive opportunity for agriculture in Nigeria. It has created a massive opportunity to refocus and think and actively go into agriculture. The volume that the volume of foreign exchange Nigeria has spent in importing wheat into this country is humongous in bringing in rice into this country. At a point, I think that was about three years ago or two years ago. Yeah, I was spending over a billion naira on a daily basis equivalent of a foreign exchange to bring in rice into this country. Fish, the same thing. Every other thing, you know, food on a uh, food fiber and uh, clothing. So we, we we need to we need to see the bigger picture. Those restrictions, those export restrictions, are actually opportunities for local production, for us to ramp up local production and create new industries. I've given you ideas of services that these farmers would need, which they don't need to own. These are investment areas for anybody who is ready to do investment in any of those areas. All you have to do is to work with NISA. Where do you have your job property? I need where I have a cluster of X, Y, Z because this is what makes business need for me. I will map those things to you. You bring in the equipment, the cost of production for every hectare for Ankobora, for instance. The line cost of production includes these services, the irrigation, the harrowing, the plowing, the bridging, and all that. And you make your and money will be made by all parties involved. Because at the end of the day, when you use planters, the, the quantity of crops per hectare increases instead of the normal broadcast method that we use in planting rice. So the part of part of this is this is this is a strategy that speaks to solving the finance problem, creating business opportunity. Let's go to the slide is what we call our investment Bible in Nigeria. Secretary, next slide, please. Okay. Now, this next slide, if you look at this next slide, let's start from the, the red line, the those written in red on the right hand side. It's on my right hand, I don't know if it's on the left. We have the baseline investment finance opportunities, we have the midline investment finance opportunities. If we look, if you recall, when I did my initial introduction, I talked about the pre upstream, the things that you need to do before you start production. So we have the smallholder based commercial agricultural sites and services. A lot of us, when a lot of us have an opportunity to travel out of Nigeria, let's say you're flying to Europe, as you're descending at every airport in Europe, what you will see is lines of well structured farms that. It is very clear that these are farms. We have all also come to Abuja or come to Lagos from some anywhere else within the country. When you descend, I won't tell you what you see. But you see, with the smallholder based agricultural sites and services, we can actually investments can be made in land developing in land development equipment. We have between Abuja and Kaduna on both sides of the road, you have Thick forest. If you're going doing Lagos Ibadan, the same thing. If you're doing Bini, Lagos Bini, the same thing. If you're doing Bini to a nature, it's the same thing. If you're doing Potato Kinubi, it's the same thing. If you're doing from Kano to Kaduna, it's the same thing. If we look at now that we were faced with the fact that we must survive and we have to live in China culture. Then the smallholder based commercial site and services scheme is a must for us to do. State governments need to be involved because, according to the constitution of Nigeria, land invested in the state government. We need to get land, we need to give investors opportunity and give them enough time to recoup their investment where they can clear this land, partition them either in one, two, three, or five hectares, put irrigation. And farmers will farm on it. The market to market method that NISAL has also developed is part of the way where intent is starting from the major users of these raw materials. We don't have to export uh, primary product. We are past that stage. We can't get any value from it in primary product. We can only get value when we add 
we can only get money when we add value to the product. And the industries are very key. If you check how much Nigeria imports, how much wheat we import, it's actually the raw wheat we import and we start turning into flour in Nigeria. We import soya into this country. We turn it into the soya bean uh, cake, the meal, or, and the oil and sell it to the market. We bring in rice, finished. But if we can actually generate the feedstock locally for our industry and save the money that is used for exporting. So under this, under this uh, guide, you can see you can actually invest in the sites and services. You can invest in captured off-grid energy services. You can invest in climate smart irrigation program. You can invest in land preparation and seed processing services. You can invest in harvesting, primary harvesting, primary production, primary harvesting, primary processing, primary transportation, primary storage. The post-harvest issue in this country is because of storage facilities, both for liquid or dry and wet storage. Then you look at the different crops that we have lined up. These are the signature crops that NYSA has interest in because of the kind one, some of them are exportable, some because of the huge value it pertains in terms of what you know the, the, the export, if we don't bring import these uh, things into the country as raw material. So if we take wheat, for example, we can produce wheat, we don't have to import wheat, we save money. We take fish in aquaculture, we don't have to import, we import a lot of fish, we can produce locally. If we look at rice, the same thing. We will look at ginger and cashew and sesame and hibiscus and actually export. We can produce this and export. The next slide. So these are some of NYSAL's results to the date. Up to our risk sharing facility, we've been able to guarantee loans and investment. We've guaranteed 697 projects. And we, with the help of our father, Central Bank of Nigeria, able to pay over 1.27 billion in the trust drawback. We have paid claims on loans that have gone by of close to 4.6 billion. And we have recovered over 4. Point, close to 4.1 billion has been recovered. In insurance, we have developed and launched the area yield index insurance. And we have protected up to 6.5 billion in revenues over 37,000 farmers with over 1.121 million paid out as compensation by the insurance company. Under our technical assistance scheme, we have developed curriculum and trained 1,029 global management and aggregate capital of commercial banks. We have provided good agricultural practices training to 700,000 farmers and certificate extension workers. In our rest of Africa engagement, NYSA has been involved in establishing an equivalent of what NYSA does in Togo, but here it's called NIFA. It's already operational. NYSA did that in Togo. And our investment, you know, like I said, we created employment that is over 400,000 and life impacted over 2 million. So the I still go back, I make one comment. You see the average rate of the food model. I will take more questions on them, but I think that is the next stage of agricultural development in Nigeria, where we show that we can be able to maximize production and our output will increase. As it is today, our average output is 1.2 tons per hectare. We are on the same belt with Brazil. Brazil's production for cereals and grain is over 15 tons per hectare. If we are losing 40% of our production at our partial 1.2 metric tons, you can, imagine, you can now see that, yes, agriculture is a solution, but before that solution, there are prerequisites that come in that must, that must happen for that gain in agriculture to happen. And part of that includes investment in infrastructure, investment in human capital, investment in security, and investment in post harvest loss prevention uh, facility. So I think I will stop here for now and wait for the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our speaker. I'd like to thank Mr. Eze Wakama.
for the great job that you have done and for helping us to understand what NASAL stands for. Uh, five pillars of NASA, risk sharing, insurance, technical assistance, rating, incentive mechanism, uh, which are the five pillars that you talked us through. And also the report card you shared about what NASA has done thus far is quite impressive as far as I can see. And I do believe that quite a lot of uh, listeners and attendees of this program have quite a number of questions to ask. In fact, I'm already seeing questions that have to do directly with NASA, but we will get there in the next couple of minutes. Let me ask our speakers to just take a cup of water or coffee beside them and you know, relax a little bit. While I like to invite our sponsor, Midway Assurance, represented by Adebayo Olukolajo, Adebayo Olukolajo, to share a few um, minutes with us, not more than five minutes, on what Hidby Assurance would like to do for this audience uh, listening to you. Thank you, Mr. Lukolajo. Welcome. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashola. Thank you for bringing us on board. We are glad to be partner with N NBCC and Leadway as one of the most um, foremost agri um, insurance company in Nigeria. We have been in, in operations for almost five decades, over five decades, and we've been into agri insurance for almost a decade. So, generally, Leadway has been has been in process of in, in, in the business of uh, ensuring agri projects right from the from the primary production down across the value chain so there's no there's no section or there's no stage at the at the at, at, the, at which any any um, farmer would want to play that will not come on board so we have various type of policy or policy products that can direct the the the, 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 pro, the project that the farmer is going so if 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 a farmer is 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 into crop production we have we have basically two type of crop insurance policy that can that can mitigate risk for that kind of project we have a multi peri crop insurance product which is which is uh, the multi peri crop insurance product is an indemnity based product and it ensures the crop against loss or damage due to natural perils and diseases and it basically ensures the cost of production of that particular projects. Also we also have the in the, the area yield index insurance. The the man from NISA, Mr. Isaiah has mentioned it. We've been part of the the, 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 the project with NISA. We've been doing one or two things with them. So that is in area yield index insurance. So those are the two basic uh, policy products that we have for insurance of crop projects for now. Then also for livestock it depends on whatever they are the, the farmer is doing for, for poultry farmers we have re, um, um, poultry insurance that ensures these birds against death due to mortalities due to natural perils due to due to diseases so these are these are this is the product that we have for 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 farmers that are into poultry production so if a farmer experience mortalities of his birds while they are on the on on, on the field while they are on the field, yeah, we can we, we ensure it, and whatever he has spent up to the time of loss, we can indemnify. Also for livestock, if we're talking about livestock, we're talking about um, and ruminant animals, large animals, the goat, sheep, cattle, and the like, and also ensure ensure this project. So our livestock insurance products can ensure that for fish farmers also we have insurance 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 policy for them that ensure the fish while they are while they are being read in their ponds, and also. For, for for I've mentioned the fish for for poultry for fish for life so those are the basic insurance products that we have and also for of the farm activities across the value chain we have our farm properties and produce that can ensure whatever activity that farm that people that are not directly into um, primary production can take up people that are in the logistic business people that are in the processing business people that are in in, in we are all saying so our farm properties and produce we ensure these produce while they are installed while they are on, 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 on in transit so it ensures it provides an insurance cover for 
for for whatever for, for whatever for whatever project that they have they, are, they, are, they have invested their money so see that these are the basic these are the five basic insurance policies that we have in Libya. you can see you can see it on the on, on, on the slide we have fish fishery and fish farm insurance as i've said we have farm properties and produce we have livestock insurance we have poultry insurance and we have multi peril crop insurance and one of the things that our 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 services offer is not just offering the insurance we also do consultation we manage this farm with the farmers just in order to prevent that outbreak outbreak of diseases our our our, our staff are all around nigeria we have offices all around nigeria our team are all around nigeria we visit the farm we visit this farm to monitor what is being done by the farmers we are not just interested in collecting the premium we monitor the farm the project with the farmer and we see how the the, the project can can be a success both for the farmer and even for us as well. So that those are the things that we have been doing in, in, in Libri. So if any participant would want to to take any of these any of these products, you can reach out to us through the contacts that have been there. Also there will be there will be a, 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 a presentation that will be circulated at our, our, our contacts are there you can reach to us you can even walk to any of the any of the uh, of our offices that is closest to you reach out to us through them they will get they will get your contact to us how we can from there and from not let me just mention that we still we do we deal with uh, private insurance and uh, private um, farmers we did we deal with in, in individual farmers we deal with um, corporate farmers we deal with government organizations that are into agriculture so we provide all these pro, um, policy products they are available for any class of farmer across the value chain that might be interested in procuring any of these policies. Let me thank you very much for your presentation and for opening our eyes to the opportunities and to what we can do for us in terms of protecting our investment at this time. I do believe that insurance policy must be a necessary condition before you can draw money from any of these um, Schemes that either NASA or CBN has. Yes. I'm not sure that anybody will give you money at this time without you showing some evidence of insurance. As a matter of fact, I think the banks also will require that you must have it. Yes, very sure. Very right. All of our listeners and our members to ensure that you do the needful. And having brought Leadway to this platform, I strongly recommend that you do business with them. With the Thank you, Leadway, for coming. Without Thank you very much. Now to the question and answer session, quite a number of questions are here. We would like to round up this session in totality, latest by 2 p.m. so that we have a two-hour session. So we have roughly about 30 minutes to do the question and answer. And I do hope uh, we will be able to take as many as possible. Um, there is a Q&A section, which we have quite a number of questions that have been posted there. And we will take them from right from the top, depending on what we find relevant. Someone asked a question, Olanika Kyonshun, Thank you for the presentation. Does the reduction in interest rates and increase in moratorium period extend to BOI facilities? I think CPM might be the best to answer this question. Does the reduction in interest rates and increase in moratorium period extend to BOI facilities? Let's also take another one so that the CBN rep in the house can help us to tackle the two together. Second question from the same Mr. Akion Shun. He says, Seeing the various schemes available is that warming. The question is, can we see details of how much has been disbursed spread across how many farming concerns over the last four years? I think NASA did a bit of work in trying to summarize the report card of NASA. But I think um, Mr. Osita will be in a better position to articulate the totality of what the CBN has done and how successful that has been. So over to you, sir, Mr. Um, Mr. Osita, once you Uh, thank you so very much. Um, let me start with the very first question that you posed. You said um, uh, the schemes, these schemes are available for logistics uh, services providers. Now, the answer is yes. Because, like I told you, um, CACs finances across the entire agricultural value chain, from inputs to processing to uh, logistics, storage, logistics, and um, uh, 
uh, uh, processing, and of course, market. So you can assess the accounts, the commercial and Greek uh, credit scheme. The DCRR is also available. Like I told you, the DCRR is actually the cash reserve of the banks. And like I also said, that all of these financing for the CBA must necessarily come through the deposit money banks or participating financial institutions. For every of the intervention, there are usually guidelines, and the participating financial institutions are usually also listed there. But essentially, it must come through them. And so you can actually assess for, um, for logistics uh, service providers. Now, the next other one you talked in terms of um, CACs, um, you talked in terms of reduction in interest rate. And whether that and the moratorium, extension of moratorium, whether they can extend it to BUI facilities. Now, you know there are certain CBN interventions that BUI are the managing agents. So if it is that one, yes, of course, it's extended. Otherwise, the, this applies to CBN interventions and, and, um, and um, interventions and the facilities. The same for interest reduction as well as um, the moratorium extension. Now, in terms of um, someone requested for the details of how much has been assessed on um, all of the, these interventions. Now, I would, I would. Perhaps you might just come with the other questions in the next two, three minutes. Oh, okay. but I know that under ASME, for instance, okay. we've done about 42 billion to 11,783 uh, projects or beneficiaries. And even this COVID, the COVID uh, that we just uh, started, um, we almost approaching 5,257 uh, beneficiaries for about 4.9. Uh, and within the next few minutes, I'll get you the other one. That's okay. Thank you very much. Let me let me send these two questions straight away to uh, Mr. Izen Wakama. Somebody is asking a question to the Barry Okori. He said, most people like him have applied for the COVID-19 funds via NASA and there's no communication. Some have applied for the AGS and EIS funds and are yet to be called or communicated with. What is the way forward? That's one question. Second question says, I indeed appreciate the effort of NASA in making or in facilitating finance for the value chain, but my challenge is a request for BVN details online. Is there a way to provide such at a more secure platform? I am always very scary, scared when I, hear, when I hear about BVN details being asked online. I do think that that could be some game around there. But the expert from NASA is in the house. He will tell us whether this is uh, the process. And if otherwise, it will guide us appropriately. So let me ask uh, Mr. Izzy to respond to those two questions. Thank you. Okay, sir. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Roberto. Uh, so the first question is he said he applied for COVID 19 and for ads and did not have any response. I would like to make a clear distinction here. NISA, the Nigerian Incentive Based Mixed Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, is an entity different from NISA Microfinance Bank. These are two entities. We are responsible for issuing credit risk guarantee. Then the microfinance is responsible, like Mr. Sister just rightly pointed out, is an instrument that CBN is using to direct, is owned by the bankers committee. It was an instrument that CBN is using to direct its intervention into the economy directly. I can also talk a little about the game Mr. Sister will permit me. I know that for the COVID-19 loans, Customers are expected to apply online. The NISA Microfinance Bank gave out links for them to apply. And um, from the last point that they, I had interactions with NISA Microfinance Bank, I'm aware that they had over 300,000 applications and are treating this in phases. And if they're treating it in phases, it depends on when you apply. The first phase that came out, which, which they announced, it was in the news, everybody is aware, about 3,000 something people got, uh, you know, there's, they are in the process of processing to those people currently. And they are also processing other batches. So I will ask you to be a little bit patient. You're going to, you're going to get response from the microfinance, but that's one. 
One on the other question uh, on COVID nineteen and access loan is the same is the same answer. But I hope you didn't apply for COVID nineteen and apply for access loan at the same time, because like the COVID nineteen implies just like Mister Ojita explained, these are for business. These are for people that are already businesses that are existing but are facing challenges on account of the effect of the COVID nineteen. For the access loan, that allows it existing businesses to seek for expansion. It allows new businesses to come on board because of uh, access of finance, which a commercial bank is not just that uh, easy to, well, say, start up. So CBN has made that uh, easy. That's for COVID-19 and Axpace. Then on asking for BVN online, I think we lost Mr. Eisen Wakama. Looks like we lost him. Okay, while he gets back online, let me ask Mr. Ositan once he'll be to help us out with a few other questions that are related here. Somebody asked a question. I have 50 plots of land for purchase, uh, and I'm looking at cassava farming and processing into high grade starch. How can I get it done? I would recommend to this individual. Okay, Mr. Eisen Wakama is back. He's back now. Mr. Eisen, okay, while he gets ready, let me just quickly speak to this gentleman, Benjamin Aregbeshola. Uh, I will ask that you get the copies of the presentations done today so that you can look at which loan will be best suited for your kind of business. And that way, you will be able to apply for a loan. There are quite a number of schemes that we have listened to from the two feminine speakers from the two organizations. And I think you'll be able to find something that is suited for your business there. One of the things we'll do before we close today is to ask for desk officers' um, details from these two gentlemen that you may please direct your additional inquiries to. And that way, you'll be able to get started as quickly as possible. Mr. Eze, welcome and welcome back. Mr. Eze? Mr. Eze, welcome up. Yes, but well, we can't hear you. Please speak to us. Unmute your speaker or your microphone. Unmute. Unmute. We can't hear you. Unmute your speaker. Secretary, if you can unmute him also, please do that for us. Okay. I think we should unmute him from the secretary, please. Okay. Please speak now. Is that easy? Mr. Eze? Okay, while he's still figuring that out, let's continue. Um, there's a question from Fatona. Fatona, are you allowed? Please confirm if all these interventions are disbursed through the commercial banks. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, the CBN director has answered that for us. Can start off fish farm be funded? I'm currently farming tilapia in my backyard at home in Lekki, and I want to start on a larger scale at my farmland in the state. I think that can also be funded. Look at the variety of schemes that are available uh, from the two presentations which we'll send to you after this uh, webinar and you will be able to apply. Um, one gentleman here, Ayoinka Jato, we know that government capacity to provide funds might be reduced and the capacity to discharge its oversight function is likely to be weakened too. That is correct. Um, one person here says, for some of us that applied for the COVID-19 target facilities loan, we have done that and we've been called for an interview and filled the guarantor's form and sent to them via a Gmail account. And we haven't heard from them since then. That's the question Simon Dong Pololis is asking. Um, let me ask, let me ask uh, the CBN director to help us with that question in addition to the question you were trying to handle before. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, you, you're hearing me now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, fine. Now, let me, let me just quickly, quickly. Now, in terms of somebody act in terms of uh, the relations and what we've done in the agri space, and I think it is important that uh, the public need to know We've done so much within the agri Now, under the Agro Growers Program, 
we have um, extended the sum of 800 billion to 1.6 million farmers. Now, under cuts, and that's the scheme I told you that logistics you know, can also um, deal, we've done 636.9 billion, billion to 610 projects. Normally, like I said, these are difficult transactions. For private um, uh, decisions, they can take up to 2 billion, and for state is 1 billion. Now, under mass, that is the main aggregation uh, scheme, with the five projects valued uh, 5.2 billion. And under pass, we've done 29 projects valued 95 billion. Like I said, that's for the nine billion valued. Uh, 49 billion to 11,738 beneficiaries. Now, quickly, for the person who talked about the 50 plots and when we go into cassava, now there is an advantage. Once it is within the agricultural space, the central bank's intervention can issue. Now, it depends now on the amount. Like I said, there are some of the interventions that are for political transactions, but there are also those that are for. Um, smallholder farms. Um, I'll, let me tie that up with the, 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 the person that talked about fish farm. You know, they can leverage the axis because I can see it's a startup and it's, um, it's also small. You can leverage the axis up to 10 million. Like I said, when I was um, making the presentation, on the axis, we expect that you would have had skills and then you would have gone through some entrepreneurship um, training. The only sense is to ensure that you understand the governance issues, that you know that business is different from OB, that you know that you need to keep your records, that you know how to uh, do your business plan, and also do some cash flow analysis, you know, and see how you can generate your income, things like that. That's the essence of the, uh, the entrepreneurship development. But you can leverage that access. I mean, the collateral is actually very easy, very simple. If you require equipment, what we'll do is that we will buy the equipment. You apply through NISAL. The equipment, um, um, the equipment component is about seventy percent of the entire facility, and working capital is thirty percent. So we we'll buy the equipment, we will register it, and it will also be insured. And I'm speaking to what the leadway insurance guy said. It has to also be insured. That's all we need. Now, the COVID nineteen, the guy they spoke about that. I, the, all them, they've interviewed it. I want to assure you that within the next one week, they will eventually get back to you. The thing is that we have approved 3,200 applications as a last week. And so they've started this, the, the disbursement. They've started the release of um, that facility. And I want to believe that whoever hasn't got now, they've interviewed you, because if it is declined, they will eventually get back to you. They'll tell you why it's declined. And that is declined and why is it? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let's take two questions or so. I would like Mr. Eze Wakama to help us tackle these two questions. Mr. Eze, are you back? Yes, I think I am. I'm back now. Excellent. Nice to have you back. Two questions quickly. Uh, someone here, Razak Saro. Razak Saro says, we are embarking on the 1,000 hectares primarily for a cattle ranch, feed lots, uh, feed lots of production, of animal feeds, which of NASA's products would be best suited for us? Secondly, goodness, Okweje. It says I'm in palm oil processing in partnership with Ogundo State in Owo, Ogundo State. I'm in palm oil processing in partnership in Ogundo State with over 165 hectares and over 22,000 palm trees. We applied first time via Smedan since. March 2019, no response. Again, by NASA quarter. Completed business proposal, still no response. Why? Uh, these two questions are directly for NASA. So please help us to see what we can do about that. Okay, let me start with the easier one, which is the Pamoyal one, the 165 hectares that apply through speed and I have applied through NASA portal, no response. I guess it's still NASA microfinance. Because they, they are the ones that give, the, we don't give money. NASA is not a funding agency. NASA is a credit guarantee. We're a risk sharing facility. 
we're not a funding agent. So I guess it's the NASA microfinance that I should uh, apply it to. And I think, like Mr. Sosa has said, any application that hasn't been treated with NASA microfinance will still reach out to them to let them know what the issues are. But you know, on a, the alternative to this, NASA has relationship with deposit money banks. We we'll call them our channel partner bank. As of today, as of today, we have commitments from deposit money banks in Nigeria to fund agriculture to the tune of 144 billion. We have these commitments. They are my commitments. It's only transactions that meet the risk acceptance criteria of banks that will attract money. And we have set up a site. So it takes me to the second question before my before I was cut off. The, the man that was asking that he was to uh, produce uh, in which is BBM on the portal, NISA portal. I know we have a deal sourcing tool on the NISA website. And the deal sourcing tool on the NISA website, you must not put your BBM. If your deal, which you put there with the business plan, if you look at it and it's something we have proceeded and taken forward, we respond to everybody to start with. Then we'll try to streamline into those that make immediate meaning now and those that will need to work with the promoters to bring their businesses up to the level that banks will want to finance. So at the point of bringing you in, you can always put your, you can always get your BVM at the point of opening account with the bank and disbursement. So you don't need to put your BVM online. I understand the fears and we also, we're also here to secure you. So don't put your BVM on NISA, our own NISA. The, the NISA microfinance is a different entity. If you're applying for loan on the NISA microfinance portal and it asks for your BVM, you have to put your BVM on that because that's, you're asking for loan on that portal and they need to do the credit checks and all that to know that you're not going any entity anywhere. So for the primordial woman, we can actually work with her to structure her transaction and draw from the commitments we have received from deposit money bank. So we'll need to know the bank that she banks with and see the business plan of, and then look at the market, look at the market segment. They are in two parts, they are in processing and they are in primary production because that's a plantation that is already existing. So we are very willing to talk with her if she hasn't talked with us. If she was talking, if she's talking to the microfinance for funding, then she still has to wait according to the microfinance workings and our own workings. We have, we share the same name, unfortunately, and we do the same thing. We are both children of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And you can guess why we why the same name, because we don't have to continue you know, multiplicity of everything. So we, we, if she can reach out to me, if my contact is left at the end of the uh, program, she reaches out, I'll be able to direct her on how to solve her problem. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, then, then, yes, I have, I have the one of the, the guy that has a, a 1,000 hectare that wants to do feedlot. You say, which product of NISA? So NISA has a model, the Integrated Livestock Development Program. We've already developed the model. It's operational in Adamawa State. It's working as well. So that's the least feedlot and feed uh, cow fattening. It's a project that already exists. If you don't have a model or you want to validate the things on your model, yes, we can be of use to you in that way. If you need financing from a deposit money bank, we are not funders. We we'll work with banks, we we'll give them guarantee, but we we'll also leverage the uh, interest drawback of the Central Bank of Nigeria on commercial loans. Banks will make their money. But for you as an entrepreneur, you can access the interest drawback, you leveraging our national credit risk guarantee on a commercial funded, or, you know, for commercial funding. So at the end of the at the end of every quarter, you get an interest drawback depending on the segment of the value chain that you operate, which goes to you, does not go to the bank, and it's pushing the effect of interest. So for him, one, we have a model that is operational, which we can work with him and you know validate the model he wants to operate. That is one help he can get from NISA instead of our technical assistant. Secondly, he can benefit from our credit risk guarantee issuance. So in this case, we have to, there has to be a commercial bank that is willing to fund, which you can work with him with the channel partner banks that we have to get funding for him and issue a credit risk guarantee. Part of what we do is not just that we take every project and put guarantee on it. We take every project, we look at the value chain, we do what we call value chain fix. We bring it, we convey, we do a, we, 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 we convey 
all the stakeholders to a roundtable discussion. We'll bring him, we'll bring those that will supply the cattle, where he will get the feed from, where those that will supply, and we'll sit down and we'll agree that this project is going to happen. Each person should give a guarantee that they, that when when you get money for input, you will supply the input that you're supposed to supply for this to succeed. So that at the end of the day, he's able to pay back his loan. So those are part of the de-risking mechanisms that we use. And then we put our guarantee because we know that we have done what we're supposed to do and we don't expect any loss on that transaction. But that doesn't mean that all transactions are full proof. So we still have those losses and we still have to go back and walk backward. A farmer is a farmer. He won't because he had losses today stop farming. Tomorrow he'll still go back to that land. So we'll sit with them and work out and make sure that those loans are repaid. That's a good hand holding process from what you described yeah. to ensure the farmers don't fail, irrespective of the level exactly. of knowledge you have as they come into the enterprise. Uh, two questions here also for you, yeah. Mr. Uh, a merchant or phone, please, what finance is available for someone going into grain processing and needs equipment for processing? Must one provide collateral? That's question one. Another individual is asking a question here. Uh, name is Charles Anusim from Serene Farms. We are in the transportation sector of the agribusiness. Does NASAL have facility for expansion of fleet for decent transportation of agri produce and livestock? I guess this has been spoken about in the course of the presentation, but just quickly to clear the doubt that he might still have. Uh, over to you, sir. Okay. So for the person that is looking to go into grain processing, like looking for finance to do grain processing, like I said, NISAL is a risk sharing facility. The microfinance, depending on the scale of the operation, the access loan is one way, depending on the scale. If the scale is higher than 10 million, which is the maximum for the microfinance, then we'll have to look at sourcing funding from the commercial bank. Our credit risk guarantee is part of the support you get for collateral. Banks, banks and banking is regulated in Nigeria, not just in Nigeria, everywhere else. There are regulations guiding banking operations. Banks will not stop being regulated because you want to do agriculture. They have to make, they still have to keep to the uh, regulations that guide them in terms of loans and then the collateral uh, structure. That covers those loans. I know that under the new IFRS 9 uh, guidelines, for every loan you give out, the security must be there. If the security is not there, the bank makes a 100% provisioning. And no bank will take a provisioning because it wants to do business. It would rather do business with the one. So our credit risk guarantee instrument will support you in assessing equipment for your, for your brain cleaning uh, endeavor. Now, we can work out structures because credit is an art, I tell people. You need to look at what is happening and then you bring it, you bring it together. If you're bringing in equipment, you can do an all-asset venture and work with the bank and then leverage our credit risk guarantee to strengthen the all-asset venture for you to access finance. And if you have that credit risk guarantee and the bank willingly approves those facilities, we will also uh, deploy the interest drawback tool of the instrument of the Central Bank of Nigeria to cushion the effect of the interest rate that you'll get. So yes, the person that wants to do, uh, what do you call it, grain cleaning equipment, what can be of help to you. Then for the logistics person that wants to expand, every business expansion, that is the field you're in, 